Hello everyone, I am Luc Alvern and today I want to talk with you about my thesis on regulation of photosystem 2 in context of uh, climate change. Uh, to begin, I need to introduce you a little bit of context. Uh, I began my thesis six months ago uh, with uh, Zealand um, Financement and SPS Financement at CIA and CNRS. Uh, as we all know, um, there are massive emissions of CO2 in the atmosphere due to human activity since 250 years. And, um, but ocean and uh, land can be a sink for uh, this uh, CO2. And um, for my part, I tried to measure how many uh, the land can be a sink. Because if we want to know how many CO2 can go to the atmosphere and how much the temperature can increase for the future. And we, for the future uh, decennium and century, we need to know how many CO2 can be kept by ocean and by um, the forest and all uh, the plants. Um, it's why I try to uh, evaluate this CO2 kept. And I talk about a gross primary production called here GPP. To do so, I um, study photosyn photosynthesis on plants. Um, for all the um, photosynthetic organism, uh, when it is eliminated, um, uh, photosynthetic organism are able to um, reduce CO2 to rubisco on uh, carbohydrates. But uh, if there are stress, as a drought or heat stress, um, this activity can be inhibited. It's uh, why I want to work on it. And also to um, measure this activity, I use fluorescence of chlorophyll, fluorescence measurement, which is very powerful and uh, non-destructive technique. And uh, I can do this technique uh, with only camera, and it's why I use it. I just go uh, before what is the advantage of this kind of technique for my uh, thesis. Just uh, to explain you the, the, the idea of this technique is uh, when you eliminate um, photosynthetic organism, uh, this organism um, quench energy by three way, quench or dissipate energy. Uh, first, there are photochemical quenching. Energy are used to um, photosynthesis and to fix carbon. But uh, this energy can also be dissipated to uh, heat. Uh, this um, kind of way are called non-photochemical quenching, uh, NPQ, noted in my rest of my presentation. And also fluorescence. For my part, I measure fluorescence, but this fluorescence measurement uh, gives me an idea of how many photochemical quenching there are and how many non-photochemical quenching there are. Um, the objective of my thesis is to try to improve a photoprotective model of model who try to uh, quantify gross primary production, especially in context of uh, climate change environment. Um, I work at two uh, scales. One scale, uh, it is uh, at a very large scale. It is a model who try to simulate um, CO2 um, assimilation on all the plants. Uh, it is orchidea model. Uh, this model will simulate other things, has a hazard flux, water flux. But for my part, I just concentrate on fluorescence and uh, I just concentrate uh, on how can I improve the fluorescence modeling. And to improve this fluorescence modeling, I use a knowledge, a more biological and physiological knowledge of uh, electron transport chain. And I want to know how the electron can be regulated to this uh, electron transport chain under a drought stress or heat stress. And I try to do link between two of them and to improve uh, non photochemical quenching uh, model. And, measure GPP for all the Earth. Uh, and the very interesting, um, if I use fluorescence, it's because uh, we can uh, have a measurement of fluorescence for uh, very efficiently. And uh, we can have a measure of fluorescence for all the, the Earth. 
and because if we do uh, other measurements, it is mostly destructive, and it is it seems to be um, possible to uh, if we at, um, if we can uh, sorry if we if we have fluorescence measurement and if we are able to interpret this data and to link with uh, the assimilation of plants, it will be uh, very interestful uh, information and it will inform us on uh, gross primary production. To do so, I use plants. I use Arabidopsis thaliana mutants. Arabidopsis thaliana, it is a very, it is model for plant biologists because it is very easy to grow. Uh, Arabidopsis have a um, very uh, little genome, very little life cycle. And uh, there are a huge bank of uh, mutants for all the gene of Arabidopsis thaliana, they are uh, mutants, um, uh, single or double or triple mutants. And it's why I use it. And gene expression are also very highly uh, studied and we know the expression of uh, gene uh, under different tissue and under stress. It's why you, um, Arabidopsis is a model and it's why I work on it. And uh, I work on non-photochemical quenching uh, mutants of Arabidopsis thaliana. Uh, for this mutant, they are, the mutants are disturbed in uh, non-photochemical quenching. Um, here I show you um, wild type and uh, non-photochemical uh, mutant. And if we uh, look for non-photochemical uh, quenching, the dissipation by heat, here we see that there are high level of dissipation by heat for the wild type plants, but here they are very low level or lower level of non photochemical quenching dissipation on uh, this method. This result show just to this result just to show that uh, fluorescence can be a very good proxy to a variety of uh, photochemistry and non photochemical quenching. Okay, then I work on uh, drought and I identify very interesting uh, mutant Nizi two. Uh, these mutants are interesting because um, when we put under the drought stress, uh, we see that the mutant seems to be less sensitive to drought. Uh, if we look after four days, for example, uh, in wild type and in easy two, the two plants seems uh, good. And, but if we go at seven days, um, the wild type uh, seems very bad, but easy two uh, seems to be cope with uh, drought stress and are able to resist longer to drought stress. Um, after I can analyze the non-photochemical quenching of my plants, but I just took plant after four days of drought stress because I want to work on plants who are photosynthetic, uh, um, are able to do photosynthesis. photosynthesis. Um, and after four days of drought stress, I look my plants and we see that uh, for easy two, uh, I see in drought stress, um, there are heterogeneity under uh, different leaves, and the, there are very high heterogeneity under leaf. And also, the um, non photochemical quenching seems to be very lower uh, in some leaf for uh, this easy to uh, mutant. Here, I just present you the same data uh, in control and in stress condition. I show you the non photochemical quenching level. Uh, but I just put a uh, different light intensity. In red, it is a uh, wild type and in blue, this uh, two. And uh, we just, here I just want to show that for this two, we see there are two kind of behavior, uh, very um, different and they are not different for wild type, seems to be not different. And they are very large, um, large non-photochemical non quenching uh, value, and uh, there are very high uh, dispersion on non-photochemical quenching value for an easy to model. And it is um, coherent with the past uh, data who, who show the difference of non-photochemical uh, quenching under leaf. Hey, I just show you some gas exchange measurements. Uh, for this measurement, I don't uh, measure the fluorescence. I just measure assimilation of CO2 by leaf. And um, uh, I, uh, um, 
I can uh, increase the CO2 concentration under my, on my leaf or increase light intensity and look at the CO2 assimilation, the real CO2 assimilation. Um, and on this graph, they think there are no differences on assimilation for NISI2. Um, but if we look at uh, relative water content uh, on leaf, uh, it seems that uh, in uh, wild type, called zero, wild type, it's the same, um, there are a decrease of relative water content, but there are no significant uh, decrease in NISI2. Um, it's a uh, going way that uh, NISI2 are able to keep water on it. And, and we don't know really why NISI2 are able to do so, but uh, work are on progress. Um, NISI, NISI mutant is a mutant with a lack of acetylation. Acetylation is a um, quite poorly known uh, modification of protein. And uh, it's why, um, it's quite poorly known um, modification of protein in uh, protein of plants. Uh, but we think that uh, for my mutants, there are pleiotropic effects. There are several effects uh, due to this mutation. And for the instance, we try to quantify ABA and uh, carotenoid on my mutant NISI and my wild type in uh, drought stress condition and control condition. Uh, it's because, um, the actantin, in particular carotenoid, are um, involved in non photochemical quenching dissipation of energy by heat. And um, ABEA hormone is, uh, is um, produced from the actantin. And it's why, we, and also ABEA are major um, regulator for stomata closure. And maybe this kind of quantification can give us um, idea of why this NISI2 are uh, able to uh, are less sensitive to just stress. Okay, just to, to recap, um, the, to, to sum up, uh, um, assimilation of CO2 um, in all the canopy are difficult to assess. And it seems to be possible with fluorescence and it is the objective of my thesis. But uh, the main difficulty is to uh, be able to do the link between this very uh, little scale of molecular and uh, regulation at molecular scale and to look at the very large scale uh, with a, a satellite uh, fluorescence measurement to have um, all the CO2 uh, absorption by, by a canopy of us. Um, but chlorophyll uh, fluorescence can be a good proxy for CO2 assimilation. And uh, Abidopsis taliana can be a powerful uh, tool too to look at uh, how non photochemical quenching mutant can be uh, uh, regulated in um, different space condition. And we see that some mutants uh, can be less sensitive to just stress. Uh, thank you for watching all my video and don't hesitate to contact me if you have idea or suggestion uh, at my email address, and it will be a pleasure to answer you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.